Welcome back, Drumliners. We are now looking at the Rock and Roll Groove Challenge from our Head of Music Department. Um, I've chosen 110 BPM because this is when music started getting faster. People started dancing and flipping each other up in the air and uh, the drummers starting to get a bit busier. Uh, rock and roll, you know, we're talking about Elvis Presley, uh, the Beatles coming in on the scene and things are starting to get a bit more exciting. Uh, so the hi-hat is giving us this little bit of a push sort of uh, similar to the reggae, actually. One, a two, a three, a four, but we're a bit faster than the reggae. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. Let's try it with the metronome. Three, four, one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. Now, the difference between that and what we learned last time, eighth notes. The eighth note rap group was quite straight. One, two, one, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And opposed to this rock and roll, it's got that uh, 16th dot at the end with the two uh, lines, the little half line there. Um, it makes the beat jump a bit before the count. One, a two, so you gotta whip it. One, a two, a three, a four. A one, a two, a three, a four. A lot different to the rap. One, and one, and two, and three, and four. It's very straight, can you hear that? One, a two, a three, a four. One, and two, and three, and four. So that's the difference between the two uh, rhythmic writing there. If you have a look at them and study that carefully, Every time you see that in your music, whether you're a violin player or a piano player or a drummer or a guitarist, you're going to know that the feel is a lot different from each other. One is straight without the 16th note double lines. One, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And one is quite sort of jerky. One, a two, a three, a four, a one. Yeah, and that's rock and roll. Let's add the uh, snare drum. I'm gonna turn the metronome on. One, two, three, Turn that off. Um, the bass drummers have one uh, on their beat and three up, which is matching with the hoop players. So if I play the bass drum and the hoop together, one, a two, a three, a four. One, so one, a two, a three, a four. One, a two, a three, a four. So sorry. One, a two, a three, a four. One, a two, a three, a four. Now you don't have to do this because you're a snare drummer or a bass player or a quad player. Uh, I'm only doing this to um, challenge myself, practicing, and also giving you an option and a and a challenge too. If you can do this, fantastic. Maybe we'll set up something where you can play the whole thing yourself. That'd be great as well. But. Here we go, I gotta still go practice it, right? So I'm not getting it right exactly, so let's try it again. One, two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three. Just so you can hear what rock and roll groove sounds like, you know? As a drummer, especially, um, when someone says to you, hey, can you give me a rock and roll groove? You're going to go back to this lesson and go, oh yeah, it sounds like this, doesn't it? 
And you can use that in your piano, writing, compositions, guitar. You need a rhythm. It's, it's the first thing that comes along when you're writing music, you know, the rhythm, what's the rhythm? What's the feel of your song? So that's why doing drumline is gonna help you with your music, uh, if you didn't know that. So one more time and I'll see you next time. Here we go. One, two, and three, four. Yeah, but really, if you're a snare drummer and you can do this, you've learnt it. One or two or three or four. One or two or three or four. One or two three or four. Or one or two or three or four. Remember, the right hand is playing the hoops. The left hand is playing the center of the snare. Yeah. With the bass drummer, and I'll see you next time. See you then.